BKS presents You Can Draw with Steph Wilson and Carrie Ann. Get your Ticonderoga 2.5s, or if you're like Carrie, no, I have a 2. and you need an advantage, get your 2.0. Faint. I'm going to have to zoom it out just a scooch. I think we're a little too zoomed in. Well, that's too far. Okay. Because of the commission I'm doing of the Sagittarius, we're going to draw a horse. We'll make it a Pegasus, because we are doing hot wings this time of year. So we'll make it a Pegasus. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to draw a horse. They're actually very, very easy to draw. Horsey. They're very oh, easy to draw. Okay. I do not know why they're so easy to draw, but they are. So let's line this up. Let's get the phone in position. Actually, it's not bad. We're drawing a Pegasus. Pretty close. Well, we don't have to. You could draw a unicorn if you want to make them a unicorn. But I realized how easy horses were to draw, and I was like, we really got to do a horse. You're not going to see me do this a lot. But I think this is also helpful if you are not somebody who draws a lot. So, we're going to be drawing a horse. He's going to have legs. He's going to have a head. There is going to be equidistant on there. So pick the middle of the page. Don't fill the whole page. Okay. So wait, let me unzoom a little. So give yourself some space on either side. And right now, very lightly, very lightly, very softly, draw an oval in the middle of the That's page. That's a big nose. <laughs> it's a big nose. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good point. We always draw with it, start with the nose, so that would be... A horse, Jeez, can you even see it, guys? There. Okay, so it's very faint. The rest of the drawing is not going to be, but I had to do it faint because this is your guideline. So draw an oval very faintly in the very center of the page, and I'll, I'll do it with the pencil because you can't see the line because I'm not drawing it dark. So draw a big nose right in the middle of the page like we usually do. This is going to make all the rest of it so easy. And the reason we drew it lightly is because we don't need all of it. We need some of it, but we don't need all of it. Okay? So starting right here at the top of the oval, go right across the top, which is basically a crescent. Okay? And with that, we can press dark on, right? Mm -hmm. And then from right here, okay, we're going to be swooping down and back around, but you don't want to go too far. So just take that line and continue it around and go to about there. I don't know how else to say. We might go a little further, but we've got to put the leg in there before we, before we know. Okay? So this is the body of the horse. So what you have to do is he's going to be standing there. He's going to have a leg here. He's going to have a leg here. He's going to have a leg here. And that's why people get so confused with horses. <coughs> Obviously, they got four legs, so there's a lot of positioning to do. <laughs> so things get a little wonky, but this is not that hard. Ready? What we're going to do is draw a little crescent coming down for his forelimb, okay? For his, uh, what would be, for you, it would be your upper thigh. on your, But this is his front leg, so I think it's called a forelimb. So two little crescents like that. Think of a wine glass, maybe, the top end of a wine glass, okay? Tell me if it's full. Mm-hmm. Then, where those lines ended, give us a little bump out or knob. Horses have knobby knees. So give him a little bump out for his little bony knee. Is this 100% accurate or no, no, no. It's very representational. So you get the idea that the upper part is thick and the lower part is going to be thinner. From this, we're going to go down to his foot. This foot is on the ground. So swoop down with a little bit, curve your line inward. Curve your line inward. Because the hoof gets wider than his shin is. And, okay, so for a hoof, whoa, draw a straight line, then curve it back to the line you came down on. Okay, and what you can do is just put a curved line like that and you've got a hoof bit more but then I really got to pay attention where the phone is or you got to let me know when I'm going off page I can't really see okay. so all right now this leg is coming out okay what he's doing is he's lifting this leg up oh boy. so just follow along with me you're not because of that you're not going to see this wine glass part of his leg so just because it's going to thin out go straight out here's that knee that we did over here 
So just make it a little lumpy shape out here. Crescent, this is that part of his leg. Same thing. While you're there, make that little stem. That's the stem of a wine glass. That's interesting. I never noticed horses' legs are like wine glasses when you do them this way. Bring this line straight back. Now, what horses do is you could draw the hoof straight down, but when a horse lifts his leg up like that, he curves his hoof. So what you're going to do is swoop under, and then this is the hoof part here. So go up with the hoof part here and bring it in an angle like that. And then give him a little hoof. Yeah. Who's debating? The back, also a wine glass, but we're going to do the back a little bit different because the back leg of a horse cu cuts in this way. Get on the bench. Get on the bench. Start with a wine glass, half right there. Snack. I know. I don't know what it is. This is on something. Psst, psst, psst. Hey. What are you doing? She better hang out and chill. She can lay down on the that's ledge a, with us. That's a good girl. You this draw. kid never does this. Oh, watch. Wait, what one. she's going to do. <laughs> she's going to drop her paw off the side? No, she's going to unplug something. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them by her nail, but she it, does it She all. hangs it by her thumb, and then it falls. But she, she'll do that for hours. Like, she doesn't move her paw. She just likes doing that. It's like a little nervous tick. So then when her paw falls, she just puts it back up. Over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Back to the horse drawing here. So, let me zoom in on the back leg. Oh, and Sarah got to see Wilson now. Yeah, that's good. So, that's, okay, that's for the back leg, right? Now, their back leg's cut in, so give me a little line that way towards the middle. Then right about here, we're at the knee level again. A lump for the knee, but what we're going to do is we're going to cut back with our crescent this time, towards the middle. Right there. Shoot in towards the middle. You don't want it to go back this way. It's going to be angled the wrong way. Here's the hoof. And around and up. Okay, so we're going to crescent back to the knee, a knob again for the knee. And now we're going to shoot back to the back of your. If your oval is further over or closer in, don't worry about it. We're, you're going to join it up now because it's a very light oval that you drew over here. I don't know. Back to here, <laughs> to the bottom of the oval, and now just connect to what you drew already. Okay, make that a hoof. Connect the belly underneath. You've now drawn the body of a horse. A cartoony horse, but a horse. Now we're going to do the same thing with the fourth leg, like this one is behind. So we're only doing part of it. So down, knobby knee, shoot down. Don't go as far as this hoof because it's back here. Across for the hoof. Again, narrow shin, knee and up for the other part of the back. Okay? And the hoof. Does that make sense? I'm gonna move it up a bit so you can see. All right. I'm basically drawing a horse. And the hoof. Huh? The hoof. Yes, yeah, sorry. Hoof. Miss lines. Hoof. I'm basically drawing the tail. Let's have fun with the tail, ready? So what you're gonna do is the tail, it swoops up and then curls down, nice big fluffy tail. So, so shoot up with the tail, go over with the tail, Bring it down in a curl. Go around like this. Go around to the butt. And then do that to show that the tail is cascading back down that way. Wow, that's a big tail. It's all bigger than the other one. It's a very fluffy tail. Let's move over to this side of the paper. We've got the whole top half. Now, technically, his head would be joined, but his... um. Chest, the horse's chest is out a lot further than his neck. So it's okay that we drew that oval and closed it. Like you don't have to draw this as an open line. His neck would be positioned further back on his chest. So the oval shape is perfect. Oh. So what we're gonna do is, basically where this oval started to turn down, what you wanna do is go up as a crescent for his neck. Do you have that safe? <laughs> so crescent up for the neck. From right from the turn of the oval. And then for an ear, think of a leaf shape. Just go out, and then on the other side go out, and then bring it in with a line. So it looks like a leaf, actually. And then right here, because we got the, the ear right here, here's the eye. Okay? 
right at the end of a little gap between the ear and the, the eye. We'll close that up right now, put a line. And then right behind it, draw an oval, but don't finish it. That's the trademark Steph Wilson second eye. side glance, second eye. All right, put a pupil in the middle of this one, put a pupil to the inside edge of that one. And now the eyes are looking at you. Then from here, draw a line down, go up like we did the knees. We want something lumpy shaped for his nostril. Put a little crescent in it and you got a nostril. Very sophisticated. Same thing, another bumpy little nostril. Now we're drawing our horse grinning. You could draw him with a closed mouth, you could draw him with his tongue sticking out. But if you're gonna draw him grinning, horses don't have long mouths. If you drew him with a long mouth, he'd be an alligator. Uh, horses have short mouths. So we're gonna have to make this a short smiley mouth, okay? Then drop down, because horses have great teeth. And then bring a lower lip down. Give him a nice big chin, if that makes sense. Okay, and I'll zoom in on that chin, okay? And then this comes back for his head and it curves up for his cheek. I don't think it's called a cheek on a horse. I don't remember what it's called. Then a couple lines for teeth. And because he's a horse, shade this part in on the teeth. Because they have a gap there. Okay, that's where they put the bridle. I think it's the bridle. What goes in the mouth? Is it the bridle? Yeah, you're talking to the wrong person. Starting right here, we're gonna have his mane coming around this way. So just do a curly thing like that, a curly thing like that, and maybe another one. And that'll represent that his hair is flopping around this way. So when it comes over the top, I mean, it's got to match his hair on top of the head, the mane. Okay, you got the mane. Did you get the mane past his eyes there, a little swoop? Yeah. Give him a little wild, another swoop there. He's got a nice flowy mane. It's got to match his hair. And maybe a little curly motion right there as well. And then what you get is a, a wind-tossed mane. Now, if you want to make him a unicorn, you got to give him a horn over here. But we're doing a Pegasus. So, from right here, swoop up and give him some feathers. So it's a crescent up and another crescent because bird's wings are jointed in the middle like that. So then, down for a feather. This is how easy feathers are. Just line down oh, and I, cut in. Line down. So Rest of his wing is going to be mostly behind him, but you want to draw a suggestion of it. So draw a line up for the wing. Too fast. And then see how the wing is narrower at the base there like that. Draw that up. And we're just gonna pass this mane right here. We're gonna replicate the shape we did over here, but we're not going to cross over where his mane is. Oops, wait, let me zoom in. Okay, right there. So, we're going to do a feather shape and a feather shape, and then it disappears. Same thing under his chin. We should see a couple of feathers. And then you get the idea that this wing is behind his head and this wing is in front of his head. And if you want, you can write mobile on the side. You write mobile on that. You don't have to write mobile on that. That's not required. <laughs> Hopefully, let me move this up from the comments because if you try to take a picture of the comments, Maybe all you can see is that everyone suffers. Zoom in a bit. Degrees. Zoom in a bit. I'm going to try and zip. There we go. So, if you want to draw a horse, snap a picture right now while it's frozen. What time is it? 9.49. We're going to do a really fast Loki gator. Does that make sense? I mean, I'm not going to. Fast Loki, alligator Loki, and it's not a complicated thing. So I'm gonna have to wing this, all right? So, so bear with me. Let's start with let's start with the classic because we're going fast here. I mean, I'm not gonna rush, but we only have ten minutes, right? Or nine minutes? Ten. Ten minutes, okay. So let's do an oval for an alligator eye. Let's do an oval next to that. Don't close it all the way. You know the rules. You guys know the rules. Pupil in the middle. Pupil towards the middle. He knows. Alligator has a bumpy nose on the top of his nose. So what we're gonna do is make 
you're drawing a line out, but do it as little waves, like you would if you were drawing the ocean when you were a kid. So it becomes a crescent shape, but it's a bumpy crescent shape, if that makes sense. What do we like? Nostrils. Nostrils are fun and easy. They're really good on gorillas, if you draw a gorilla. Okay, gators have long mouths, so swoop all the way past his eyes. Drop down. Let's bring that line a little closer as we get over here towards the end. Like, don't make it exactly the same distance apart. Give him a chin, not as big as the horse chin we just drew, which is really a cartoon representation, and it wouldn't be accurate, but... And then swoop back and give him a jaw. Now, if you want to do a fun alligator, just put a couple points in there. Now, if you want to do a smiling alligator, draw straight lines all the way down. And you could do that classic zigzag thing that you used to do when you drew a monster, where you just went ding, 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 ding all the way through. Give him a little smile mark. Alligators have a little bump. Their eyes are in sockets that are raised above their skull. So draw a little rounded shape here for that eye socket and then come back with his head. Now you're gonna draw the inside of his mouth here because his mouth curved here. So draw the inside of his mouth there and you know what we like to do, give him a tongue and then do your shading. And you got a gator face. I could have zoomed in for that. I'm sorry, guys. You've got a gator face. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to draw him sitting up. So what we're going to do is shoot all the way down. Okay, and now we're going to put his leg right in here. So draw a nice little gumdrop shape. And draw some long feet. Like when we draw a bear, we would draw these shorter. But, and then put little claws on them. From his head, give him a belly around to the foot and draw a line matching that back to his neck and give him a little ladder shape, like we did the dragon last week. That's his belly. Okay, on the other side, we've got another one, which is the same gumdrop shape, but behind him. And you only have to draw one toe and one behind it. And that'll give you the impression that his other toe is facing the other way. Do little lumps across his back. Alligators actually have two ridges, but in this pose, we'd only see one. But they have a twin set of ridges going down their back. Then let's do an alligator tail. Lots of fun. Zoop up that way. Curl it around this way. It's not accurate. It's a fun alligator tail. Okay? And what you can do is put a little wiggly line down the tail. You don't have to draw the ridges like we did here because you're looking at the top of them, but it gives a representation that they're the way Okay? All we're missing is his forearms, which are very short. They're not T-Rex short, but they're not as big as his back legs. Three little claws and back up to his arm. Giving a matching arm on this side with some claws. And now what we need to do is the Loki helmet. Because it's Loki, alligator Loki. So do a crest type shape above his eye there. And then you gotta do the wacky horns that Loki has, which goes all the way out and all the way back. All the way over and all the way down. Oops, should be a little more pointy at the end that I swooped back too fast. There you go. Now on this side, that shape would make no sense because you'd be turned all the way to the side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over, but not as far. Don't go as long, because this is a foreshortened distance here. And then curve up with this horn that way. And that gives the representation that this is that way. 
and you're looking at the end of his horn here, and you're looking at the side of the horn there. And you've got a Loki gator. Very nice. Here's my gator. If you drew a Loki gator, if you drew a horse, please share it. Oh, I like your Loki gator. Thank you. He's got a nice smile. Then nice share gator. it with me or share it on Facebook and tag me. Um, wait, I'll hold this up and freeze it in case you want a reference picture. Snap now. Okay. I Thank you so much for drawing and watching with us. Please like, comment, and share if you had fun.